Joining me now is John Sandway. He is the former acting director of U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Thanks so much for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. We understand uh, from reporting by Jake Tapper that, that Secretary Kirsten Nielsen, who was pushed out, feels that the president was becoming unhinged, but also asking for impossible things in border enforcement. Impossible things. And by that, I imagine, we think that it means just closing the border, not allowing people to seek asylum anymore. There are laws in place that do govern what you can and can't do, correct? Correct. Absolutely. It, I think that... Go ahead. go ahead. Well, I think the secretary faced an unwinnable situation. I mean, the president wants to see the numbers stop. In many ways, that's out of her control. More importantly, is the administration's policies really have been ineffective. And, and I think if you ask folks like myself or other folks who've been involved in border security for a while, we knew they were going to be ineffective. You can't try to do a tough deterrence-based approach to a mi mass migration like this where people are fleeing incredible poverty and violence. So Nielsen is sitting there held accountable for the daily numbers, but also forced to implement the policies of the Trump administration. And frankly, it's just an unwinnable situation for her. Uh, and ultimately, she was not able to satisfy the president and was pushed out. I do want to ask you about one of the solutions that the president has proposed over the last few days, and that's to just get rid of immigration judges. Listen to this. They have to get rid of the whole asylum system because it doesn't work. And frankly, we should get rid of judges. You can't have a court case every time somebody steps their foot on our ground. Get rid of judges because most Democrats and Republicans I hear from would like to add immigration judges. John, that is the single, you know, I hate to say it, the single dumbest idea I've ever heard in terms of dealing with this current crisis. Look, the reality is our asylum laws guarantee that you set your feet on American soil and you say you're fearful of persecution in your home country, you get a hearing before an immigration judge to, to prove that or not prove that before you're deported. Now, the reality is that the majority of the people coming across, roughly, you know, only about 20% of them are actually getting asylum, and that number fluctuates quite a bit, but very few of them are actually getting asylum. The problem we are facing is we don't have enough immigration judges to process the cases quickly. So when you have these kind of numbers, let's say it's 100,000 this month, as was early, predicted earlier in the month, what that means is that those people who arrive today dealing with with only 300 judges, it's going to be years before they have their hearing. Now, the American public is frustrated, and I think what the president is trying to do is use this crisis as an opportunity to force Congress to get rid of the asylum laws. But the practical reality is the Democratic Congress is never going to get rid of these asylum laws. So what we need to do is the exact opposite of what the president is saying. Flood the zone with the rule of law, Imp surge the number of immigration judges, process these cases quickly, and unless and until we start sending people back home, you know, unless and until we fix the situation where when they come up here, they can stay for five years waiting for their asylum hearing. This crisis is likely to continue. Uh, so it's the exact opposite approach. Is the president right insofar as he is saying that the system, though, is broken or the system as it is cannot address the challenge that the country is facing? You know, John, the, sy the system right now is overwhelmed, and, and that's because of uh, the changing circumstances at the border. You have to understand, if you look back at the history of the border, we've handled far more people mm -hmm. with far fewer resources. In the mid-2000s, we'd have somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.5 million apprehensions by only 5,000 Border Patrol agents. Today, we're going to be far below a million, and we have more than 20,000 Border Patrol agents. So it's not the number of individuals. We're more than capable of handling it. What's changed is, instead of people from Mexico who don't claim asylum coming across, and people from Mexico can be returned very quickly because we, you know, obviously are neighbors with Mexico. It's Central Americans. Over 60 percent of them are parents with children, and they're all claiming asylum because they're fearful of persecution in their home country. So what you would think the logical response would be, let's surge the resources that process the asylum claims. There are different resources than deal with, you know, folks who are trying to sneak into the country and evade capture. This administration has doubled down on, on all the resources that deal with the kind of old crisis, and they haven't adjusted to face the realities of the new crisis. And that's why Nielsen and, and someone like Kevin McLean, and who I have a lot of respect for, really are putting themselves in an unwinnable position because they have to double down on these ineffective policies but deliver results for this president. You brought up Kevin McLean, who will be the acting Secretary of Homeland Security. Tell us about the man that you know. Well, listen, I, I think that the, the way in which Nielsen was removed in the middle of this crisis with this kind of chaotic approach, you know, unexpectedly, does nothing but further destabilize the department, create confusion, create fear and uncertainty throughout the department. And, and you know, but the good news here is that Kevin McLean is coming in, and Kevin is as competent of an individual as I worked with at the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, he was a he was a political appointee, I believe, in the Bush administration, who converted to a career official, uh, but someone that we always had a lot of respect for. I know Secretary Napolitano and Secretary Johnson had a tremendous amount of respect for. Uh, incredibly bright, understands mm -hmm. these 
these issues, and frankly has a good sense too of some of the other missionaries of DHS, which I think are getting lost, counterterrorism, uh, and, and even cybersecurity. So an incredibly competent manager, a very smart guy, and I think we're lucky that the president appointed him. Just the manner in which the president mm -hmm. did it only creates further chaos. If the president is looking for someone who will be more hardline, will he find that person in Kevin McAleenan? You know, Kevin's definitely an enforcement guy. Definitely believes in border security. I, you know, I think Kevin is more, you know, is, understands having dealt with Kevin at the beginning of this crisis when I was at ICE, understands the challenges and the need to surge resources to process these cases quickly and get these people out of the country quickly. That's the crux of the problem. It's the exact opposite of what the president is saying. You know, I have never known Kevin to be the kind of guy who likes to talk tough like the president likes to talk tough. I mean, but I think, you know, I'm not even sure what tough means, to be quite, quite honest with you. I mean, the president implemented one of the cruelest and you could argue toughest policies there is in the family separation, what's going to be Nielsen's legacy, quite frankly. Uh, and what happened? The numbers only increased further. Uh, but Kevin is not the kind of, you know, he is much more, in my experience, someone who's substantive, you know, more about substance than he is the rhetoric. John Sanway, great to have you with us this morning yeah, and helping thank us you. understand what's happening. Appreciate it.